Thank you very much. And just so that there is no confusion, these teleprompters are not for me. I don't do teleprompters. In 1773, the colonists were fed up with old King George and the abuse and the arrogance imposed upon citizens and patriots who all they wanted to do was to create a free nation. 1785, two years later, the American Revolution started. Eight years after that, we won the American Revolution. Our nation today has become a nation of crises. We have an economic crisis. We have an energy crisis. We have an illegal immigration crisis. We have a foggy foreign policy crisis. We have a moral crisis. And the biggest crisis we have is a severe deficiency of leadership crisis. And here's what this administration and many of the people in Washington, D.C. don't understand. The American people are fed up again with the abuse and the arrogance. We need another revolution in this country. It won't be bombs and bullets. Not this time. It'll be brains and ballots at the ballot box. We must outsmart the liberals. We must outsmart the stupid people that are trying to ruin America. We outnumber the stupid people. Trust me, I counted them. <laughs> My good friend, Neil Boyce, who was a radio talk show host out of Atlanta, many of you know Neil. I was a guest on his show one day, and he said, Herman, I beg to differ with you. I said, what's that, Neil? He said, you know, there's a difference between people being stupid and ignorant. I said, yeah, you're right. You say stupid people are ruining America, but they don't have the ability to learn. Ignorant people have the ability to learn, but they won't learn. They just don't know any better. I said, Neil, you are technically correct. I said, so what you're saying, Neil, is stupid people and ignorant people are ruining America, both of them. <laughs> I don't care what the technical distinction is. They are both ruining America. And this is how we save this nation, folks. I challenged each of you last year at this very conference to do three things. I challenge you to stay informed, stay involved, and to stay inspired. And those three strategies are still applicable today. Because since we met here a year ago, those three strategies have become even more important. And I know that many of you were big supporters of mine when I was a candidate for president. Thank you. Thank you. And I want you to know that that is not something that I don't appreciate. And just so I will say it to you directly because of your support and enthusiasm, there were two reasons I dropped out of the race. Gutter politics. And number two, 
I chose to put family first. And in making that decision, I knew that we together could change Washington, D.C. from the outside and from the bottom up, even if your David didn't make it to the White House. So what I decided to do is create an army of Davids, and you will be a part of that army. Stay informed. This administration is deceiving the American people. They say that we are in a recovery, but how can 1.7% growth in GDP be a recovery? It is not. This is the only president where GDP has not gotten above 4% in the three years that he's been there and it's not anticipated it's going to happen in this year. And he says on TV, and I quote, I deserve another term. For what? One point seven percent GDP growth is not a recovery. The other thing that this administration is deceiving the American people on. Unemployment rate. Some of you all may recall that I was a mathematics major in college. I can count. <laughs> and I also know when they have manipulated the numbers to present whatever result they want. It's called, if you change the assumptions, you can get a different result. That's what they did. They stopped counting the people that had dropped out of the, the workforce. They stopped counting the people that were underemployed. That's how they came up with 8.3%. But if you add those people back in, the real unemployment rate exceeds 15%. That's the real number. Stay informed. <laughs> know the facts. And I'm not the only one who uncovered that little scam. Former Labor Secretary Lane Chow, she did her analysis and came up with the same results. Stay informed, folks. Because unfortunately, the lame stream lapdog media they can't do those calculations. And so most of the American people are going to be buffaloed by false facts. Stay informed. Know the facts. And if you want to know what the facts are, just go to my website, caneconnections.com. Caneconnections.com. We present the facts every week and every day. Secondly, stay involved. I know many of you all are involved in different organizations. That's great. You are here because you are involved and you want to learn. But stay involved. And one of the ways that you can stay more involved is to adopt the most bold economic growth and job plan on the planet. 999. <laughs> adopt it. Make it yours. Make it your plan. Here's how the adoption plan works. <laughs> Go to your representative or your senatorial candidate before they get elected and ask them to adopt 999. And if they say that they don't know anything about it and they've got to study it, that's a cop out. Well, if you go to caneconnections.com, we have 999, the movie. Five minutes. Now, they can spend five minutes watching a movie, right? And they'll understand what it is. Get your representative to adopt 999 before they get elected. Because the 999 adoption plan is leading this revolution well, we are going to get Congress and the president 
to basically embrace this solution that the American people want. We are tired of kicking the can down the road. The American people want stuff fixed. Let's fix something for a change. We've already gotten many representatives running for Congress, many senators running for office who have adopted the 999 plan. Step two is we're drafting the legislation. And after the legislation is completely drafted, we're going to ask them to do something that many of them don't normally do. Read it. <laughs> after they read it, we're going to ask for a firm commitment. But I need your help to get them to adopt the 999 plan. And I'm happy that one of the people that's running for United States Congress in the state of Ohio, in a very challenging district, has adopted 999, and I am endorsing his candidacy, is my friend Joe the Plumber. Stand up, Joe. You see, some of us, some of us choose to get off of the sidelines, and I admire Joe for doing that. Yes, he's going to get attacked. Yes, they're going to try to do the same things to him that they did to me. But folks, more of us have got to take that challenge. I don't regret making the move that I made, because that's more than one way to skin a cat. Stay informed. Stay involved. And thirdly, stay inspired. You see, the liberals want you to believe that we can't do this. They want you to believe that Obama's billion dollars, if he gets that much money in campaign money, is going to make it a shoe-in. No, it is not. That's what they want you to believe. Stay inspired. You remember those founding fathers that I talked about? When they started the American Revolution, there were a lot of people who told them that they could not win the American Revolution. But they did, because they believed that they could. And a lot of people thought that after the character assassination that was launched against me, that Herman was going to shut up and sit down and go away. <laughs> Ain't going to happen. So let me tell you what inspires me, my inspiration. Everybody's inspired by different things and for different reasons. I have a long list of things that inspired me to run for president, that inspired me to be a voice for the conservative movement, that inspired me to want to change the direction of this country because we're on the wrong track and we need to take it back and there are more than one way to take it back. Let me tell you what has inspired me. You've heard me talk about my granddaughter, when I first saw that little face, she was born in 1999. And when I looked in her little face, the first thought that occurred to me was, what do I do to make this a better nation and a better world? She was born long before I ever thought about getting involved in changing the direction of this country. In the year 1999, that's one, nine, nine, nine. <laughs> you see, I think God was in it back then, but he hadn't told me yet. She was born in the year one, nine, nine, nine. And on January 1st, 2012, this year, my fourth grandchild was born on New Year's Day. Number four. And before the doctor spanked his little butt 
and made him cry, he already owed $48,000 and he hadn't done anything yet. <laughs> we cannot leave that to our children and our grandchildren. There's a real clear message, folks, that you and I are sending to Washington, D.C. We the people are coming. We want our power back. We the people are coming. And we want our power back. It was the Irish philosopher Edmund Burke who once wrote, the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men and women to do nothing. I will not die doing nothing. And I don't believe you will die doing nothing to give our children and our grandchildren the kind of nation that we were able to enjoy. Because the preamble to the Constitution says, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, the union is in trouble. And it's up to you and me to get it back on track. We hold these truths to be self-evident. We still hold these truths to be self-evident, and we, the people, are still in charge of this nation. Let's take our country back. <laughs>